Recording started. Hey everybody, this is the fourth video in my How to Build Your CCIE Collaboration Home Lab. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to uh, install a Cisco Unified Communications product. There is three phases to uh, all the products, Call Manager, Unity, Presence, and UCCX. They're all, all of them have three phases to their install. You have the pre-install, the installation configuration phase, and then the post-install phase. The first two phases, the pre-install and the install slash configuration phase, is identical between all, every one of those products. So there's not much point in doing an individual, individual video for each of them. What I will do is I will explain how to do the first two phases of every product, and then I will do follow-up videos for the post-install for each of those products individually. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my desktop. So here we have my ESX server. I have, if you've been watching my videos up to this point, you should have your ESX server installed. You should have your, uh, your virtual switches all configured. Um, there are some prerequisites at this point. You cannot install your products unless you have, first off, an NTP reference. So you will want to have set up your PSTN router at this point. That will become your, P your uh, NTP reference for all of your servers. You will also, um, since DNS is part of the CCIE Collaboration Lab, you will want to have your DNS server completely functional at this point. The only product that requires DNS for the installation is UCCX. So if you wanted to be lazy at this point, you could install a call manager without that, but I would recommend you don't. There's not much point in doing it the wrong way if, you know, if you're eventually going to have to do it the right way. You may as well just do it the right way at the beginning. Uh, if you guys are CCNP voice candidates, uh, you could skip pretty much all that because you don't need UCCX and you definitely don't need DNS. In fact, you don't really need any of this for CCNP voice, but if you're just kind of wanting to figure out the product, you could skip all of that at this point. Uh, at this point, I also expect that you have gotten a cold of the template files from Cisco as well as the installation media for all these products. Um, I have them on my laptop at this point. So let's go ahead and start with the call manager. So you're going to go to File, Deploy OVF Template. And here it's going to ask, where is that template? I'm going to browse to the files on my computer. So here I have them. So I have Unity Connection, uh, Unified Communications Manager. I am in Presence and UCCX. Now, Unified Communications Manager and Unity Connection uses the same installation ISO. However, the template file is different between them. And when you go to install Unified Communications Manager or Unity Connections, depending on which template you use, it'll boot up, it'll look at the hardware resources of your virtual machine, and it'll determine if it's a Unity server or a call manager. So this is going to be a call manager. Let's go ahead and use the call manager template. Next, and you can see we're going to be installing Unified Communications Manager version 9.1. Next, give it a name. So this, I'm going to be working on my headquarters for the time being, so we're going to call this pub-hq. We're going to stick with the Cisco 360 uh, naming convention. And here's where we're going to decide what sort of resources we're going to throw at it. Now, you'll notice it'll tell you I'm building a Red Hat Linux machine. It's two virtual CPUs, six gigs of RAM, uh, 110 disk hard drive. That would be for a 7500 user node. I don't need anything close to that. I'm going to go with the bare minimum, although we're not going to be using the business edition. So I'm going to go with the bare minimum non-business edition call manager, which is the 2500 user node. You'll notice that that will use four gigs of memory and an 80 gig hard drive, one virtual CPU. That is perfect. Next. Which data store do you want to put it on? This should look pretty familiar to the, the other uh, video I've done. So next. Again, thin provision or thick provision. This is uh, just like the last time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and thin provision this. Next. Uh, and which VLAN do I want to use? Uh, I don't have any options to set this right now, so I'll stick with VLAN 10. I need to put this in VLAN 5, though, so we'll do that after we're finished. Next. Uh, I could power it on, that won't really help me very much though, so let's go ahead and finish. Let's let the template create the virtual machine, 
And then let's go ahead and make a couple changes. Edit the settings. Okay, I'm going to put the network into my VLAN 5. I am going to go to the CD-ROM. I'm going to go to the data store ISOs because I put all my stuff on the data store. And I need to pick the right ISO. So that's the one. This is Unity, uh, or I'm sorry, that's Presence. That's UCCX. That's my call manager slash Unity installation media. Okay, and also make sure it connected to power on. And hit okay. Let's go ahead and launch the console and start the boot process. Now, as I said, there are two phases to the installation. There is the pre-install and then the installation configuration. Uh, you'll see when we get to the very first screen that we can make a, a, a decision on, there, are, there will be two options. Do you want to configure it now or do you want to configure it later? If you decide to configure it later, it will perform the pre-install. The pre-install will copy all of the binary files to the virtual hard drive. And at that point, you would no longer need the CD-ROM or the ISO mounted, however you want to uh, consider that. Um, so once the pre-install is done, the next thing will be to configure it. Now, if at the very first screen you say, yes, I want to configure it, it will essentially do both uh, the pre-install and the installation configuration all in one go. Um, this is all dependent on what you want to do. If, if you were, you know, it's all, all, it's all scenario based. If I didn't have time right now to configure them all, I could start the, the pre-installation for all of them and then later on down the road it will save me a little bit of time when I'm actually ready to start configuring them. Uh, how long it takes to actually install these products is very dependent on your hardware resources. Uh, this is an R710 server. I have some hexacore processors, I think they're 2.8 gigahertz. Um, this thing should go relatively quickly, although I will not leave the video running because relatively quick, quickly is probably still an hour. Uh, so you do have an option here. Uh, do you want to install Call Manager or do you want to install the ELM uh, by itself? I have no need for the ELM all by itself in this uh, virtual environment, so I'm going to use the Communications Manager install. And it's saying there's no, ver there's no versions already existing on the hard drive. Uh, I'm going to install 9.1.2. Is that what you want to do? Yes, it's what I want to do. And here's the screen I was talking about. So it's asking you, do you want to configure this? You can proceed, yeah, and proceeding will mean, yes, I want to configure this, or you can skip this. If you hit skip, it'll start the pre-install, that's it. You can walk away from it for a while and then come back to it later. But uh, that's not very helpful for you guys for this video, so let's go ahead and just proceed, because uh, by proceeding, it'll be the next screen you would see if you skip this anyways. So let's proceed. Very, very important question here. Would you like to imply an upgrade pass as part of this installation? Now, the answer is no for my, my lab. However, if this was a production environment and I was adding an additional server to my uh, cluster, everything has to be patched to the correct level. The, the answer would be absolutely yes. You would need to patch this to the appropriate level of the rest of your farm before going any further. Um, in this case, the answer will be no. Uh, you'll notice I no longer have a back button, though, once I've clicked no. Um, if you needed to patch it, guess what? You've got to start all over. Uh, there's, there is no way to go back to the last screen to patch it at this point. So continue. Uh, which time zone? Uh, for the headquarters, the time zone is Los Angeles. That is correct. Okay. Your next feed and duplex. Continue. Do you want to change the uh, maximum transmission unit size for the OS default? Absolutely not. I, I don't know any reason why you would ever want to do that. Do you want to use DHCP? Absolutely not. We know what IP addresses you want to set for all these things. I, I can't imagine wanting to use DHCP ever, even in production. Okay, your host name. So we're going to stick with Cisco 360 defaults. So this will be pub-hq. The IP address will be 10.1.5.2. Uh, 
The mask will be 255-255-2550. The gateway will be 10.1.5.1. Do you want to use DNS? Now, this is where if you're being lazy, you can say no, um, at least for call manager. Uh, no, I'm trying to build my lab appropriately. So the answer is yes. So the primary DNS server, 10.1.6.8. The domain, beyond VoIP.net, okay. Now, you're welcome to use whatever admin accounts you want to use. I'm going to stick with the Cisco 360 defaults. So, so the this is the platform administrator. So this is what you log into the web interface to actually manipulate the inside of call manager. Uh, that will be admin, Cisco 123, although actually I don't remember if it will let me use this. It may tell me that's not complex enough. Yeah, it's not complex enough. Okay, I'm going to use my own password at this point. In fact, I'm going to use administrator. Okay, organization name, unit, location. I uh, This is one part I always just blow through. There's really absolutely no point in putting anything here. Um, if it's a production environment, you probably would, but this is not. Okay, is this the first node in the cluster? That's a great question. Yes, I don't have any other servers in this call manager cluster. Now, so I, if this is call manager, is this first node? Yes. So let's say I have call manager installed and we are doing Unity connections and you get the screen. Is this first node? Yes. You only have, at that point, you wouldn't have a Unity. When you're doing presence, is this first node? Yes, you wouldn't have a presence at that point. The exception to this rule is when you're adding your subscriber for uh, call manager. At that point, is this the first node? No. Then it's going to ask you for the information for your publisher. Uh, I will show you during the post installation for call manager how to prepare your call manager for its second node. Uh, is this first node cluster? Yes. Ah, the NTP reference fact. I don't remember the IP address. Give me one second. It'll be 10.141.1. And okay. So the security configuration, this is uh, whatever password you want to set it to. This is the password you need when you want to add an additional server to your farm. So uh, again, if you are adding a subscriber, it's going to ask you for this password. Okay, are we going to use SMTP? No, we're going to skip that. And the application password. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. The platform administrator, the one that was asked me previously, is what you'd use to uh, SSH into the server, shut it down, back it up, restore it, stuff like that. Um, this is the application administrator. This is going to be for the uh, main interface for call manager. Now, they are separate accounts. Even though I'm going to use administrator for this, and the other one was also administrator. Um, they are two completely different accounts. They're kept in two different databases, and it can be exactly the same. All right, it's basically telling me I'm ready to go. Press OK to continue. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. At this point, it's going to install all the binary files, configure it. Uh, assuming that I have done all of my network configurations and my DNS correctly, there will be no errors. If you get past this point and you start having errors, it's because you missed a step or you didn't do something correctly. Uh, I'm going to end the video here and uh, go ahead and join me for the post installations for the rest of the products. I will talk to you all soon. Thank you very much.